Hello everyone, welcome to today's news chatter. Let's begin with our prelims practice question. Take a look at this question. Arrange the below mentioned coral reefs in the descending order based on their size in area, that is highest to the lowest. So these kind of questions are generally difficult, but there will be certain clues. For example, everyone knows that Great Barrier Reef of Australia is uh, the biggest coral reef in the world, biggest living coral reef in the world. So that will always be the correct option. Here, there is just two options in which two is given as the first one. So it is either B or C. Then if you look at the second one, a red C coral reef is provided. Here in C, Mesoamerican barrier reef is provided. So it is Red Sea Coral Reef. Red Sea Coral Reef was also in news. Regularly it has been in news because of the climate change. So you need to know that Red Sea Coral Reef is the second largest coral reef in the world. Then comes the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef, which is in the Central and South America. Then finally comes the Florida Reef, which is around the Florida region of southeastern part of United States of America. So these things should be known. Try to learn it. Kerogen. Kerogen is a term which was in news uh, recently. So we need to know what exactly it is because it is very easy to make questions in prelims uh, regarding terms. So what exactly is kerogen? So we all know how petroleum, coal and all these resources are formed. They are formed inside the earth, especially in sedimentary rocks. So a lot of living organisms or uh, such as plants, animals, uh, human beings even, etc. get inside and then get trapped inside the rocks and then because of pressure and temperature, they get converted into coal, natural gas, uh, petroleum, etc. So the primary source of hydrocarbon in rocky underground is known as kerogen. The primary source of hydrocarbon in the rocks, in the rocks when you are exploring, the places where you get high amount of hydrocarbon that is known as kerogen. They are lumps of organic matter. They can be deposited from three possible sources. One, it can be lacustrine, that is from lakes. So if a very big lake is there, lake is having a lot of flora and fauna in it, in case if the lake come, gets uh, inside the earth, if because of the earth movement or because of certain natural, resource, natural disasters, if the entire lake uh, submerges, it can result in kerosene. It is known as lacustrine. Second one is marine ecosystem. If an entire sea uh, gets immersed inside the uh, inside the landmass, for example, the uh, when we talk about the tectonic plates movement, when the earth plates movement, we tell that the uh, the entire um, uh, entire uh, Indo Australian plate was not in the position which is at present. It was in the southern side and then it moved. So there was a very big sea called as Tethys Sea. And this steady sea completely submerged. So in such cases, we get marine ecosystem and then we get terrestrial ecosystem that is land. So in all these places, we get three different types of deposits. The rocks surrounding the kerogen can become warmer because of continuous movement and because of pressure, etc. And then because of this, this organic matter breaks down and then it will result in hydrocarbons. So lacustrine kerogen. So what kind of kerogen provides? What kind of uh, deposits is what we need to know. So lacustrine kerogen results in vatsy oil. Marine ecosystem will result in oil and gas. And terrestrial ecosystem will result in light gas, oil, coal, etc. Vatsy oil that is of very high density happens in lakes. In marine ecosystem, if it gets inside, what will happen is it will produce oil and, na and natural gas. In case of terrestrial, it will result in coal. So this is why coal is always uh, something which we get inside the land. But when we see about the natural gas, mostly it is offshore. Petroleum, mostly it is offshore. So this is something we need to know. Crude, if you see, it is mostly in the desert, in, ter in uh, terrestrial region. So these things we need to remember the rock containing kerogen is called the source rock source rock for hydrocarbons measures to control maoism in india so recently there was a news about uh, encounters in chatisgarh region so 
we need to know what are all the steps India has taken. What exactly is Maoism? Maoism is people engaging in armed violence against state or against the people of the country. That is called as Maoism based on the idea of Mao. Mao was the first president of China. He believed in armed rebellion. So when people engage in such armed rebellion against the government, against the people, then it is called as Maoism. Generally, it happens in the Red Corridor states. That is states such as Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Bihar, uh, and the uh, and the Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, etc. Some parts of Maharashtra also. So here, why uh, too much of Maoism happens? Because high amount of tribal people, tribals are exploited. Tribals are subjected to exploitation. They are completely alienated from the uh, from the mass, uh, so it is very easy to manipulate them. It is very easy to make sure they can turn against the state by some external or internal factors. So that's the story. But what measures India has taken? First thing, deployment of central armed police force. Generally, the state police force will work along with armed police force. So here, armed police force include the CRPF, Central Reserve Police Force, BSF, Border Security Force, ITBP, that is Indo-Tibetan Border Police. So all these three wings of uh, the Central Armed Police Force are engaged in controlling of Maoism, first thing. Financial and logistical support has been provided to the states. Uh, the central government has been training the state police forces for counterinsurgency tactics and uh, intelligence gathering tactics. Separate wings of police such as the Cobra Commandos and Greyhounds are trained so that they can engage in anti Maoism measure. Rehabilitation package. So, this is a very good package for people who are involved in Maoism. If they want to rehabilitate themselves, they can surrender their arms and surrender to the government. The government will give them pardon. They will also give them a grant of 2.5 lakhs for high ranked left wing extremist operatives and 1.5 lakh for middle and lower ranked uh, extremists. And they will have a three-year period. Within three-year period, if they have rehabilitated completely, if they are not involved in any violence or any kind of disruptive uh, behavior, then the money will be provided to them. Samadhan doctrine is a very important doctrine and it has been working very nicely. It is a all-endorsing doctrine. Here, S stands for Smart Leadership. Then A for Aggressive Strategy against the Maoist. Motivation and training, actionable intelligence, dashboard based key performing indicator or key result areas, harnessing technology, action plan for each, each theater. For every region, they need separate or different plans. So that's what we call as action plan for each theater and no access to financing. So this doctrine and the entire abbreviation try to remember them. Finally, apart from that, we have the development measures also, such as Gram Sadak Yojana, Sankalp Se Siddhi, Mission One Dhan Yojana, not V A N D, it is V A N. Mission One Dhan Yojana, that is to uh, create entrepreneurs among the tribes, create economic uh, economic empowerment among the tribal people. So that is Mission One Dhan Yojana, Sankalp Se Siddhi and Gram Sadak Yojana. So these are all the measures. US-India Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technology. So this is a very important strategic partnership between India and United States of America. So recently there was a news about it. Uh, we are going to see how much progress we have done related to this ICEP measure. India-US Initiative for critical and emerging technology. So what are critical and emerging technology? So let's jump in directly here, the focus area of the initiative. <clears throat> what are all the technologies we classify as critical? Critical means very important for, this, uh, for the future of the country, very important for the technological development, very important for the strategic and security of the country. AI research agency partnership, Defense industrial cooperation, defense industries so of both the countries will come in cooperation. Defense technological cooperation, defense startups, innovation ecosystem, semiconductor development, cooperation on human space flight. Some important factors we need to know. The major cooperation area, artificial intelligence, semiconductor, defense. 
artificial intelligence, semiconductor, defense, and space. Four important categories. Semiconductor, artificial intelligence, defense, and space. So we will, both the countries will cooperate with each other. Here the most important point is this point. India will share its core technologies with US and US will also share their core technology with India. So this is going to merit India to a greater extent. Another very important point is look at the importance they have given to this program. Both the countries, they have agreed that their National Security Council, National Security Council directly will oversee this implementation of this mission. So the aim of this mission is to collaborate in critical emerging technology, co-development and co-production. Both of us will co-develop, co-product. So this at present is restricted to India and US. If it works well, they will extend it to all the quad countries. Four quad countries are there, which include India, US, Australia and Japan. Then later they will introduce it to NATO countries also. Then they will introduce it completely to Europe and then to the rest of the world. So this is the biggest idea. Apart from this, there will be advancement in 5G, 6G, operation of open RAN, open radio access network, radio communication. So these are all the steps we have taken. EVM, electoral voting machine. What exactly is electoral voter machine? The basics we need to know. It was introduced on a trial basis in 1982. Chronology based questions you can get. It was introduced in 1982 in an assembly constituency of Paravur. Paravur is in Kerala. Later, they introduce it to the entire country. How does it work? It doesn't get connected to any network. It will work as a standalone device. It cannot be hacked or anything because it is a completely standalone device like a calculator. No external input, no external output, nothing will be there. So no connectivity. Based on this, the Supreme Court itself in several cases have upheld the validity of the EVMs completely, not just in one instance, in multiple instances. One very important case we need to remember is Subramanian Swami versus Election Commission of India. In this, the Supreme Court itself gave a verdict that a proper paper trial should be there. Even if you tell that it is completely efficient, it cannot be hacked, let there be a paper trail. Based on the paper trail, we will get to know whether it is working properly or not. People should have that satisfaction. It is based on this judgment, the government came up with VVPAT, that is Voter Verifi Verifiable Paper Audit Trial. So a VVPAT machine will be linked with the EVM based on it a slip will come once you click on your vote in the in that slip the symbol and the party uh, party symbol and the uh, pa party to which you voted will be shown for seven seconds and after that it will be shredded and destroyed so it shows how good the machinery is working mechanism to uphold the integrity of EVM and VVPAT process so whenever if you are getting a question or if anyone asks you how can we tell that EVM is good or how the government or the, elec the election commission is ensuring that it is working properly based on these measures. What they do is random allocation of EVM to boots before polls. So there is no uh, proper allocation. Everything is completely random. So you cannot trace it. Conduct of a mock poll. Before the poll, they do conduct a mock poll to display the correctness of EVMs and VVPAT. And in this, the party functionaries can participate and they can see whether things are working fine or not. The serial number of EVM along with the total number of votes polled in a particular booth will be shared so that the party functionaries can check whether the numbers are matching. If you are voting in a particular poll booth, there, the total number of votes polled on that particular day, along with the number of the serial number of the EVM, will be given to the party functionaries. So they can also check it whether the numbers are matching or not. So these steps the Election Commission of India has been taking. One important point for prelims foreign institutional investors recently, the uh, RBI has told that we will allow the foreign institutional investors to invest in sovereign green bond. In sovereign green bond, what exactly is sovereign green bond? Sovereign green bond is similar to a normal sovereign 
bond, but it is used for renewable energy projects, renewable energy projects such as solar project, gas projects, etc. Even hydropower projects of less than 25 gigawatt is known as a uh, renewable project only. So for all these things, they will be using. Here, how it will benefit? It will benefit because it has lower interest rate than conventional government security. If the government securities are providing, let's say, for example, 5 percentage, this uh, green bonds will provide 3 percentage. So this extra 2 percentage interest rate will be the profit, which we call as greenium. Instead of premium, we are calling it as greenium because it is for green projects. So this is how the sovereign green bond work. Uh, people think that it is not beneficial. Why would people invest in this? But they do invest because last time when the government opened sovereign green bonds, they were overvalued. They were completely oversubscribed. Too many subscription happened. So it is a very good measure. So recently the government has told even foreign institutional investors can invest in sovereign green bonds. So that will be all for today. All the best. Study well. Let's meet tomorrow.